sounded like the mechanism was reset. Letter and some scraps of leather full of holes? That's all? Let us have a closer look at the letter before we voice our disappointment. It must contain something really important. It is addressed to Cardinal Coubertin in Paris, evidently written by a certain Bernard. Just read it out loud, will you? To his most exalted eminence. Cardinal Coubertin, I am much relieved to hear that you received my encoded letter in Paris. You will understand my circumspection once you have decoded the letter in its entirety. For in the wrong hands, this account could easily corrupt the faith of those whose hearts harbor even the slightest of doubts. After reading only a few lines, you will come to realize how quickly this will shape the foundations of our very society and lead to utter chaos, such as has never been seen before. Thus, to be on the safe side, I will not send our usual messenger to bring you this letter and the enclosed templates, but our beloved sister Elise. I urgently implore you to keep this letter and the templates safe in your secret archives at your estate. As you know, Zandona's influence is immense, and we shall need any proof of his sacrilege in order to have him tried by the Inquisition. This template is the key that will allow you to decode the plans of Zandona and his Puritas Cordis sect, which divine providence itself has seen fit to place into my hands. Place the templates on the parchments which the messenger brought you ten days ago and you will realize the full extent of the disaster that is upon us. In his blind, boundless ravings, he has spelt doom for Gatineau and predicted the downfall of the town in the eternal flames of perdition. And you know what that means. An entire town. He wants to erase the whole town, for he believes himself to be both judge and executioner in the name of our almighty Lord. And that is only the beginning. My previous letter will reveal to you the horrors that we face. All those terrible plans of Zandona and his congregation, Puritas Cordis, that he assembled in the name of God in order to spread his outrageous teachings as the word of our Lord Almighty himself. I hope that my knowledge will prompt you to take appropriate steps in order to prevent the worst from happening. I write these lines in utmost concern for my own life, but with certainty that I made the right decision. May the Lord grant our beloved sister the strength to deliver this message unscathed and in good time. May God protect us and be with us in these times of tribulation. I remain your humble servant, Bernard. Okay, let me just get this straight. Zandona and Puritas Cordis burn Gatineau to the ground. Sure looks like it. Why? I mean, what was the point? He probably wanted to make an example of them. A warning to all those who failed to heed his words. So he just invented a load of prophecies and then saw to it that they all came true? That's what it looks like. And Bernard, together with Cardinal Coubertin, tried to stop Zandona and his Puritus Cordis sect. Yes, evidently. But since Elise never arrived in Paris, and the Cardinal therefore never received the proof against Zandona... Okay, so far, so bad. 
But all of this happened more than 350 years ago. What does any of this have to do with the here and now? I assume that either the Puritas Cortes sect secretly continued to exist through all those centuries and for some reason have now resumed its activities, or... Or? Or it was founded anew. Whatever. What's all that got to do with our situation now? And the flood wave? Not to mention the forthcoming apocalypse that Elise was hinting at. I assume that back then, they managed to put an end to Zandona's doings after all, and prevent the apocalypse. I guess so. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Exactly. And the modern Puritas Cordis might actually want to do something about that. You mean they'll pick up where Zandona left off years ago and try... And try to pull it off this time. Right. Oh. And the end. What will it be like? I assume that the answer to this question can be found in Paris. With Coubertin? Yes. And you really think that Zendona's plans, the ones Brother Bernard sent to Paris, might still exist in those secret archives that Bernard mentioned? Why not? So... Using that information and the templates we found here, we might actually be able to anticipate the next moves of Puritas Cordis? And take some measures to block them. Hmm, okay. What are we waiting for? To Paris? Sure. The question is, where exactly do we go looking for these documents? Paris is a big city. But Bernard wrote that the hiding place is at the Cardinal's estate. And how hard can it be to find that? Right. So let's go. Oh, I see you are awake now. Where... where am I? Do not worry. You are quite safe. Safe? What makes me safe? These bars? Am I safe from you? Your questions will have to wait, I'm afraid. There are a few things we would like to know first. My employee found a photograph on you. It so happens that he worked as a barkeeper on the very ship this young lady was traveling on. Who is she? That's none of your business. Now let me out of here. Now, now. Keep calm. I think you fail to appreciate your position. You see, my employee is armed. You, on the other hand, are not. And one more thing. My employee will not hesitate to shoot you down if you keep trying our patience. Do I make myself clear? Yes, you certainly do. Good. We mean you no harm. On the contrary, we want to help you. But we shall expect a little help from you in return. So, who is the lady in this picture? My ex-girlfriend. Name? Nina Kalenkov. What do you want to know? What is this all about, anyway? Now, now. Who is asking the questions here? Well, it would appear that your ex-girlfriend has a certain problem, just like you. She fails to understand who makes the rules in this game. We would like to know where she is at the moment and what she is planning to do next. Nina, how should I know? You still don't get it, do you? All right. One more time. Either you tell us what we want to know, or else... Or else what? Or else we will have to proceed without your help. But that would be painful, both for you and for your ex-girlfriend. So, you see, the choice is yours. I have a few important things to take care of that cannot possibly wait, but I will be back soon, and it would really be too bad if you still haven't made up your mind to cooperate by then. Too bad for you, and for Ms. Kalenkov. This is supposed to be the incredibly secret archive of Cardinal Coubertin that we've been looking for. We must be on the right track. 
We're going to find this archive. We simply must not fail. Hello? Are you listening to me? Yes, of course. Well, we're not going to find much here, are we? I am sure this is the right spot. It has got to be. You can see that there's nothing left here but a couple of foundation walls, right? Yes, but this place corresponds to the description. Therefore, it must. So what do we do now? If I only knew. Maybe we can find some old blueprints or historical documents which might give us a clue. Old blueprints? For ancient ruins? Have you got a better idea? No, I guess not. At least we must try it. There's no alternative, is there? Are you coming? Thanks, but I'd rather stay here and take another look around. I don't know what I'm looking for, but it's better than helplessly staring over your shoulder while you study Latin texts. Yes, you're probably right. I don't see for the life of me what we could possibly have overlooked here, but better be on the safe side. Shall we meet here then? All right. Wish me luck. We need it more than ever. I do. I wish you all the luck in the world. Thanks. And the same to you. Maybe you'll actually find something. Who knows? See you later. All right. I will have a closer look at these ruins then. There's a light blue stone stuck in the wall. How odd. It appears to be different from all the others. This stone is loose. Just a little yank. used to say, don't go playing in ramshackle buildings, dear. Oh, she was so right. Just what is this place? There's a cold draft coming from that crack. I wonder what's behind it. I can't even get my fingers in there. And I can't really imagine being able to open a massive stone door with my hands. This probably used to be the entrance. Crashing through the ceiling wasn't necessary back then. By the time I free up that passage, I will be old and gray. It says, Institio Venus Vi Est. If I remember my school Latin right, it probably means something like, standing still is the end of the path. Ah, some of the letters can be turned. Some of the letters... I don't have the faintest idea what I would achieve by turning these letters, so fiddling with them doesn't appear to make much sense at this point. This is the way back up to the ruins. So how will I get out of here? Wait a moment. I have a plan. A plan that has proven its worth for thousands of years. It's sophisticated and elaborate. The perfect rescue scheme. Let's see whether it works here. Help! Help! Get me out of here! Help! Anybody there? Hello? I'm here! Down here! Help me! How on earth did you get down there? The floor just gave way beneath me. If you don't mind, I'd really like to continue this conversation above ground. Do you think you could get me out of here somehow? Wait, 
I've got an idea. Thank you so much. You probably saved my life. It was my pleasure. Any time. I'm interested in this old chapel. I wanted to take a closer look, but obviously there isn't much left of it. No, it was largely destroyed during an air raid in World War II. But maybe I can help you? You? Yes, me. With nothing to do all day, you have to keep yourself occupied somehow. And I occupy myself with history. Excellent. Then maybe you can tell me something about Cardinal Coubertin. He had this chapel built, didn't he? Yes, he did. But there isn't a whole lot we know about him. All the records kept while he was in office are stored in his archives. And where are they? Who knows? They searched high and low after his death, but they haven't been found to this day. Nobody even remembers where he was buried. All I know is that he had a curator who took care of his legacy following his death in 1663. The curator died ten years later. They found his body in his squalid basement dwelling after he had been dead for a week. He should be buried in this cemetery as well, but I have no idea as to where exactly. I don't even really know his name. I think it was Michel or something like that. Well, at least it's a start. Not much to go on, but better than nothing. Are there no further clues? Not really. He was barely known around here. Cardinal Coubertin brought him back from one of his journeys. He wasn't a local man. Also, he hardly ever went out, and when he did, he was heavily covered up, which soon led to wild speculation amongst the locals. He served the Cardinal for almost 40 years. Okay, I'll take another look around here. Thanks again for the rescue and the brief history lesson. It was my pleasure. I'll be here for a while yet, so if you have any more questions... This chapel has me stumped. I need some additional hints. Maybe I should try to find the curator's grave first. I'm just going to take a look around. You do that. He's filthy and in rags, but he seems to be nice enough. There's something vaguely familiar about him. Hello. There's something else I think you might be able to help me with. No problem. What is it? What you said about the Cardinal's curator? Yes. Could you please repeat it for me? Of course. Please don't leave anything out. Any information you can give me about the Cardinal and his environment might help. All I know is that the curator took care of his legacy following his death in 1663. The curator died ten years later. They found his body in his squalid basement dwelling after he had been dead for a week. He should be buried in this cemetery as well, but I have no idea as to where exactly. His name was Michel or something like that. Not really. He was barely known around here. Cardinal Coubertin brought him back from one of his journeys. He wasn't a local man. Also, he hardly ever went out, and when he did, he was heavily covered up which soon led to wild speculation amongst the locals. He served the Cardinal for almost 40 years. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm just going to take a look around. You do that. They call this model the Duck. Quack. One of the most famous landmarks in the world. A reminder that some lucky people actually visit places just for fun. No, really. There isn't much left of the old chapel. A compost heap. All right, all right. Here I go again, rummaging through dirt. Ugh, nothing else here. I don't know my way around Paris, and before I stumble around the city aimlessly, I had better check out this area here a little more thoroughly. I will go look for the grave of Michel the Curator, then. It isn't much of a lead, but since he seems to have been rather close to Cardinal Coubertin, maybe there's some hope of finding something out that way.
The path splits in three directions here. Graves from the 1650s, graves from the 1660s, and graves from the 1670s. Hmm, let's try this way. The graves here appear to be sorted by wealth. Poor on one side, rich on the other. Where do I go? Let's see what I find down this path. Oh my, they certainly have this thoroughly organized. They separated people who died young from those who passed away at a ripe old age. Let's go this way now. Yet another sorting criterion, but this appears to be the last. This time they distinguished between women, men, and families. Bureaucracy is obviously not a very recent invention. Hmm, now where does this path lead? Is this the right area? The Cardinal's curator would hardly have been a woman, or maybe... Who knows? Michelle, the curator was actually a woman. No wonder she hardly ever went out in public and was always so heavily covered up. If that had become known, I assume that when she was buried, this scandalous fact was discovered and hushed up. This is probably why her grave has been forgotten. I hope I can find a clue here and finally make some progress. This altar was made from a single massive slab of stone. That's why it remained more or less unscathed throughout the centuries. Truly a genius. But as usual, there is nobody around who could really appreciate that. There appears to be another room built into the rock by the far side of the abyss. Thanks to my famously positive attitude, I live in hopes that it is the archive we are looking for. There are obviously still some stones missing from the mosaic. I don't even need to start figuring out the correct positions until I have them all. Seems to be an old map of what is France these days. There's a legend on the panel next to it. The king was in dire straits. He had withdrawn to Provence, and the options he had left did not bode well. The peasants were rising to the north, and the reinforcements from the Kingdom of Navarre, who had just crossed the border, were forced to go up against a massive fortress to the east. Meanwhile, his opponent sat back and eagerly watched the spectacle unfold from his country estate in Brittany. Seems to be an old... The If the homeless man hadn't heard me yelling for help, it's halfway stable where it is, and I don't want that to change. After all, I do not intend to spend the rest of my life down here.
If you should remember anything interesting regarding the archives or the curator, then I will let you know. Don't worry. Thanks. The stone is light blue, and it shows the image of a white king. Ashfording and the mist. I don't know. If you should remember anything, then thanks. Seems to be an old. The king was in dire straits. He had with the. It almost looks like the stone came from this mosaic in the first place. I wonder whether there are any stones that fit in the remaining empty fields. Hello. There's something else. No problem. I found a mosaic in there, but a few of the stones are missing. I found a light blue stone up here in the altar chamber that matches the mosaic perfectly. I suspect there might be more stones like it. Maybe the same strange shade of blue. Do you have any idea where I might find stones like this? No, not really. Well, I guess that would have been too easy. Stop, wait. I just thought of something. Many buildings around here were destroyed during World War II air raids. Yes? All stones from the derelict buildings that were still halfway usable were used for rebuilding, including those from this church. Rebuilding what? Well, first, there is a little bridge not far from here. Then, the old metro station. And the jail, I think. Great. In that case... Oh, yes. And the zoo. That's a lot of buildings. Any idea where I should look first? They were all built pretty much at the same time. But at least you needn't try the zoo right now, because it is still closed. Okay, I'll save it for later then. Can you tell me how to get to these places? I've got this tourist info map that I can give you. Wait, let me mark the relevant sites for you. I'll go hunting for the missing blue stones then. I think I'll start with the bridge. It's supposed to be close to here. What an interesting phenomenon. A local rain shower that stops right in the middle of the bridge. The idle street cleaner may be slightly less impressive, but at least he's in harmony with the overall picture. Unfortunately, there's not a stone in sight that could fit into the mosaic. Maybe it's on the other, dirty side of the bridge. A heap of dirt, garbage, and rotting leaves. The street cleaner may not move terribly fast, but he sure does a thorough job. I gave up complaining about having to rummage through garbage a long time ago. Money. Mine for the picking. I don't know why, but I'm suddenly starting to wonder, do street cleaners count as civil servants? Unless I intend to go for the wet look, I should make sure I'm not standing close to this puddle when there's a car coming. Hello? Hi. You're a street cleaner, right? No. I am a molecular biologist collecting samples for scientific research. Oh, I really thought you were... What kind of research? Of course I am a street cleaner. Oh, a comedian. I never knew street cleaners were so witty. Not that I've met all that many. The only time I've ever seen the streets swept completely clean was during a World Cup final. Touché! Surely while sweeping you would have noticed if a blue stone had been built into this bridge, right? Yes, indeed. If I had actually cleaned this bridge before. Haven't you? No. I'm just helping out. And there is no blue stone on this side of the bridge. I'm sure I would have noticed it after sweeping here for four hours. Yes, you certainly would. 
Why are you still sweeping this side of the bridge? It's spotless, but the other side is completely filthy. Have you looked over to the other side? Yes. Why? It is raining. Such things are known to happen. Indeed. So, I am waiting for it to stop. You mean you're not sweeping the other side of the bridge because it's raining? No. That would be silly. I thought so. I am not sweeping there because I would get wet. Oh, and you think that's less silly. Would you jump into a cesspit? No, but... You see, so why should I volunteer to get soaked? Especially when there are alternatives. Which are? I can continue to sweep here. But it's clean here. But not surgically clean. What will you do if it starts to rain on this side, too? Then I will be out of luck and get wet. And then what? Then I will sweep the other side of the bridge. After all, I will already be wet in that case. And they tell me female logic is hard to understand. Why are you so scared of water? I'm not. I'm just not keen on getting wet. Not as long as I can avoid it. So it's not some childhood trauma? Not that I know of. It's a professional hazard. Getting wet? Rain. You know, swing your broom, clouds will loom. To think that I keep getting accused of having a penchant for puns and bad poetry. I haven't got the right equipment. I had better try to get the street cleaner to sweep over here. Unlike the right half of the... Ducks, how nice.